What is up everybody? It's Kalen Moss, AKA the Minute Admin here, and I am going to show you literally the easiest way to pass any Salesforce certification. The way I'm going to show you how to pass this is going to change the way you think about certifications, and it's going to change the way you approach certifications. And I am going to hopefully change your life and get you to pass pretty much any Salesforce certification you take. So let's go ahead and get started. So the way I'm going to show you how to pass this certification or any certification you take is by showing you how I show people how to pass the marketing cloud email specialist certification. So it, if you're studying for any Salesforce exam, you're probably really familiar with any exam guide. So you go to trailhead, you go to this credentials tab, you go to certifications, and then you choose the certification that you're studying for. So you could be studying for Salesforce admin, marketing cloud email specialist, platform app builder. It really doesn't matter because the way that I'm showing you how to pass a certification applies to any certification that you're studying for in the Salesforce ecosystem. So I'm going to go ahead and click get the exam guide. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the exam outline. So you should go to the exam outline for the exam or certification that you're studying for. And what I want you to do here is I want you to look at how the exam is structured. So if you see here, email marketing best practices is 15% of the exam. Email message design is 13 all the way down to tracking and reporting, which is 7% of the exam. Now ask yourself this question. And this is something you're going to have to do a self analysis on is this structure in the correct order. You're going to have to really spend some time to think about if this exam is in the correct order. Now I've already done this for the marketing cloud email specialist certification. And I've also done this for the Salesforce admin certification. So if you're watching this and you're studying for Salesforce admin, leave a comment in the comment section below to let me know if you want to see this video done for the Salesforce admin certification. So, but for right now, we're going to talk about the marketing cloud email specialist cert. So we've got to structure these sections here in the correct order because right now they're not in the correct order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the right order and I'm going to show you how to actually think about studying this exam outline. So let's go over to this lucid chart that I created, which is basically the minute admin marketing cloud email specialist exam study guide. So what I've done here is I've broken this exam right here down into a real world use case scenario. So I'm going to show you the scenario here. So let's say that Elon Musk, I'm pretty sure almost everyone knows who Elon Musk is. If you don't, he's the CEO and founder of Tesla and SpaceX and the boring company and all that stuff you probably have already heard about. But right now we're going to talk about Tesla's. So let's say in this real world scenario, Elon Musk wants to sell more Tesla model S's in the month of July. So what the heck is Elon going to do about that? How is Elon going to sell more Tesla's in the month of July? So Elon's going to run a July marketing campaign to sell a hundred thousand model S cars. So to basically get to this right here where he wants to sell more Tesla Model S's in the month of July, he's going to run a July marketing campaign to sell 100,000 Model S cars. Now, the end goal is that Elon Musk in Marketing Cloud is going to run a campaign in Journey Builder. Now, the question is, in this real world scenario, how in the world do we get to that point where Elon Musk is going to have the people who run Marketing Cloud run a campaign in Journey Builder? So that's got to be broken down based off of this exam outline right here. Cause at the end of the day, what we want is we want basically marketing cloud to be running a journey and journey builder. And that's going to be this marketing automation piece right here. So let's go ahead and break down this exam. And I'm going to show you how this restructuring of thinking about the exams helps you to pass any Salesforce certification. So as you can see here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six different sections that I have highlighted here. And that corresponds to these one, two, three, four, five, six different sections on the exam outline. So let's break this up. So the first section that we're going to start with 
is this email marketing best practices, which is 15% of the test. So as we can see, email marketing best practices is actually the first step that we need to understand. Now, I want you to think about it like this. In this use case scenario, this real world scenario, you are hired by Tesla and Elon Musk comes into the office and says, hey, I need you to set up a campaign in Marketing Cloud. I need you to pretty much get 100,000 Model S cars sold and I need you to do that using Marketing Cloud. Now, what would you naturally do? You would start to ask yourself questions. You would start to say, well, how do we get to this end goal here? You would start to backtrack. You know what your goal is and you reverse engineer it. So the first set of questions you're going to start asking yourself are the email marketing best practices. So you can't even begin the process of sending emails unless you know the email marketing rule book which in this case is email marketing best practices, which is 15% of the test. So this is the most crucial step to know if you want to do things legally and do it the right way. So marketing, you know, you've got to follow certain laws like can spam and GDPR laws. So you've got to know the different laws behind the scenes before you ever actually hit send. And that's where this section of the exam is going to come into play. Why is that so important? Because on the exam, you're going to be tested on your knowledge of email marketing best practices. So instead of breaking down the exam with these five bullet points right here, take these technical and like super hard technical jargon type of bullet points and break them down into just regular questions. So as you can see here, given a customer scenario, evaluate the elements and techniques of email marketing to design an effective email campaign. Now, to the regular person, even to somebody like me who is actually skilled in marketing cloud and knows what this question is asking, this is too technical. And I'm sure as I read this to you, it's too technical to you as well. So what I did was I said, I broke everything down into questions. So as you can see, we've got five questions here for this section because this corresponds to these five questions or these five bullet points right here. Now the first most logical question if you're working at Tesla in this use case scenario and you want to sell 100,000 Model S cars, the very first question that you're going to ask yourself is how do we actually get subscribers into Marketing Cloud? Now that's going to be this bullet point right here. Given a customer scenario, demonstrate appropriate and effective subscriber acquisition methodologies. Okay, I don't know about you, but that is too much technical jargon. The fact that someone says subscriber acquisition methodologies, that just is like, nope, I don't like that. So I, I hope that you're probably on the same page as me where you're like, this is way too technical. We are not lawyers. We're not doctors right here. And the tech world should not be that hard. We need to speak in tech. We need to speak in layman's terms. And I've broken this down into layman's terms, which is, okay, how do we actually get subscribers into marketing cloud? The second question is, are there certain ways we have to communicate with our Tesla customers? Which question is that? That's this apply best practices of communicating with a population. A population is literally just a set of customers, literally just Tesla customers. So as you can see, I'm breaking down these bullet points right here, these technical and hard bullet points on these Salesforce exams, and I'm turning them into basic, regular, everyday person type of questions that you would ask yourself if you were actually on a client site. So right now I'm putting you in the shoes of working at Tesla and you are basically asking yourselves these questions as if you were working at Tesla. So hopefully this starts to make the exam seem so much easier. So the third question is, are there any illegal rules we have to know before we start sending to our customers once we gather them? And that's going to be differentiate elements of an email that can impact message deliverability. Or it may be a different one here. Let's see. Legal rules we have to know before start sending. Um, that's oh right here. Recognize situations where legal compliance may be an issue during an email campaign. So that bullet point is broken down into this third question right here. And as you can see, I'm asking these questions in a logical sequence. And the very first, you know, section here is the most logical first section. 
So once I break down that section, I break down these bullet points in the most logical order as well. And then the fourth question that we're going to ask under this bullet point or under this section is what roadblocks would stop our message from getting to every single person we send a message to? So that's going to be differentiate elements of an email that can impact message deliverability. Then the fifth question is, how can we make this July 2021 campaign as effective as possible? And then that's going to be right here. Evaluate the elements and techniques of email marketing to design an effective email campaign. So as you can see, I've broken down these five bullet points into super simple questions. So these are just five questions that you can ask yourself in a very layman's terms, regular, everyday, hey, we're having a conversation type of, of question. So start to think about when you start to see these bullet points on the exam outline, whether it's for email specialist, marketing cloud admin, or Salesforce admin or platform app builder, how can you break down the sections on the exam right here? How can you break them down into the most logical sequence? The most, the first most logical sequence you'll need to know. So for email specialists, it's you have to know best practices before you ever do anything else. And then break down these bullet points into the most logical sequence as well. And then once you've broken these into the most logical sequence, turn them into layman's terms, regular questions. So we've got that. Now let's go to the second part here. So the second part is subscriber and data management, which is 28% of the test. So this is where we start to learn how to get a list of people who are actually interested in Tesla's. So if we're sitting in our office, let's say Elon Musk has gone out on a trip with the cyber truck or his roadster. And he's like, Hey, I'm gonna be back in two hours. I need you guys to have everything set up. This is the type of conversation you're going to be having with your coworkers. So the subscriber and data management section, which is 28% of the test is the most logical next step because after we, we gather email marketing best practices, we're not just going to jump into email message design and start designing emails. Um, if we don't have our subscribers in here. So we've got to have our data before we start doing anything else. So if you're studying for Salesforce admin or platform app builder or a developer cert, remember data is usually the first thing that's going to come up. Anytime you're implementing a new solution in Salesforce marketing cloud, um, any sort of like CPQ service cloud, it doesn't really matter. Data is going to be usually one of the first things that you're going to tackle, uh, whenever you do any implementation in Salesforce. So the next thing is we already know this is now the second, um, the second set of questions we're going to ask ourselves. This is the most second logical sequence. Now these four bullet points underneath this out exam outline section are going to be turned into four questions that are going to make sense in most, the most regular terms for us. So instead of looking back at these questions, I'm going to send, I'm going to give you a link in the description below. Um, to this exam outline. And I want you to match up these questions to the questions here or map up these bullets to the questions over here. So we're just going to go through the rest of the questions here. So under subscriber and data management, which is 28% of the test, we're just going to the very most next logical question that we would ask if we were working at Tesla. So the sixth question would be, will we put our customers into lists or data extensions? Now, one thing I want you to realize is you're not just asking yourself these questions. What these questions are going to do are they're going to start to make you start to ask additional questions. So now you're starting to think, well, what's a list? What's a data extension? Um, when do I use a list? When do I use a data extension? The way you ask a question is the way that you start to open up your world to other parts of studying for the exam. So once you start to ask yourself this basic question, other questions start to open up and you start to figure out what a list is, what a data extension is and everything like that. And then the seventh question is how do we import our customers into our lists or data extensions? Now all you literally have to figure out is how to import a customer into a list or a data extension. And once you figure that out, then you understand this, this bullet point on the exam because this bullet point, um, maps up to determine how to import data into marketing cloud as per best practices. So once you figure that out, 
You understand that. Now, imagine going through all of these questions here. Look at all these questions under email message design, which is the next most logical section on the test. We've got questions 10 through 14 right here. And then we have this section of the test. And as you can see, I've, I've mapped this out all the way to tracking and reporting, which is the last section of the test here. So we've got three bullet points under tracking and reporting, which means we have three questions under tracking and reporting here. So remember, once you ask yourselves these layman's term questions, this is going to be basically a follow-up of once you can ask the right question, then you can figure out what you're actually trying to learn. So how do we run the right reports? Well, now the follow-up question is, if you're working at Tesla, what are the right reports? And then you start to see what reports are in Marketing Cloud and what do they do? And then you can start to see, okay, this is exactly what I need to know for the test. So once you understand that structure, then go ahead and create that for yourself. But luckily for you, you don't have to create this um, exam outline because I've already created it for you. So if you want, there are two places you can get this exam outline, and I will leave those in the description below. You can get this exam outline um, in the description below, or you could also get this exam outline in my Marketing Cloud Email Specialist course and Marketing Cloud Administrator course. So I have a full course, $47 a month. You get a three-day free trial, and you can get this literally just... Go and sign up for the free trial if you want, download it, and you have the exam outline right there. So you could literally start on this today. You could get it in the description below. Um, I will put a link to the Marketing Cloud course that I have um, as well. So if you want to learn Marketing Cloud, then you can learn and get the Marketing Cloud Email Specialist Cert and Marketing Cloud Administrator Certification. And there are over 250 lessons in that course, like I said, for $47 a month. So uh, it'd be pretty crazy for you not to take advantage of that. Like I said, you do have the option of getting this. Now, really quick, if you want this same exact type of study guide for the Salesforce Admin Certification Go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make a video about that. And I will leave the link in the description below for you to download that exam guide. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, leave a comment, leave a like as well. And don't forget to subscribe, turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any future Minute Admin videos. Thanks.